today I've learned a little something about uh, this is a TH400 behind a big block 454 and according to this this is a technical bulletin from Engine Builders Association so focus in a little bit here um, I don't know how good that is but you can always pause the video and take a look at this so what the deal is is um, that the pump gear is responsible for or the the well the pump itself I'm assuming the gear is from the pressure um, <clears throat> it's saying that uh, at times these units operate with low engine manifold vacuum which results in higher torque converter oil pressure excessive oil pressures may hydraulically force the converter forward resulting in additional pressure uh, being applied to the crankshaft. The end result is premature wear to the crankshaft thrust area. And in this particular case, um, the uh, customer's vehicle experienced that to the point where his engine had to be uh, rebuilt and a new crank actually uh, installed. So what we're going to do is the modification that they uh, have supplied to correct this problem seems to be primarily in some of the bigger engines of the time uh, 70 the report 727s in Mopar to uh, have had this problem so we're going to do via the instructions here um, we're going to kind of do this little update to the pump that supposedly bypasses this pressure kind of like a pressure relief uh, so to sort of actually um, but we'll check it out we'll, we'll get it we'll try and get it done one thing right quick I'm going to point out um, that I absolutely hate is when people use silicone on these pump <laughs> I mean honestly for 30 years of doing this stuff I've never had I've never had one of these seals uh, leak on me to be honest if there's a leak problem it's because there's a nick in the case uh, or something where the seal isn't able to to do its job or this o-ring I should say is able to do its job and all the silicone does is just become a mess and um, yeah some guys oh, it's just extra insurance well you know they didn't make they didn't engineer these things to have this problem and they don't so especially in the pan and by the way if you put silicone in your pan particularly in 4060 E's you can plug up the relief valve the relief hole from your 2.4 and that creates a burn up in your 2.4 band so when you lost second gear or fourth gear that could be part of it because guys will change their fluid and they'll comb the living shit out of it and uh, that's what happens so there's a relief hole there right on the pan a little indention for it and sometimes you get carried away with the stupid silicone and uh, it creates a big problem uh, called failure so anyway this is a stupid idea I don't like when people do this um, because it's, it's unnecessary honestly and the uh, best thing to do is check and make sure that the surface of the where it really gets nicked is there in the case. It's aluminum. This isn't going to nick very, very much because it's steel. But the aluminum sure as hell will, and it has. When someone's using a screwdriver, or usually. So I'm not real sure. I just, again, uh, that's where you want to check to make sure your O-ring can seal properly. Otherwise, they don't leak. They won't leak. So, anyway, that's... That's on that. I'm going to go ahead and tear it down at this point. So, uh, taking the gears out, by the way, most gears have a little dot. And that dot sits up for up on top, if you put it in backwards, you're going to crush the pump. 
So this is to sit up like that, and these come out with a little bit of help. And uh, we're going to clean this up and then uh, have something clean to work on. We'll follow the instructions. All right, <clears throat> so I got the two halves apart. Clean all my silicone as I can get out and sprayed this with some carb cleaner. Get it cleaned up here. And the hole that we're going to be drilling and tapping is going to be this one right here. And uh, we're going to uh, get a small end piece and then we're going to, uh, I think I got it in focus here, um, drill a point zero six two hole through that. It looks like, um, I take that back, point eight two point zero eight two hole in that. Let's see if I can focus it in a little better. And uh, and then we will, uh, and then the other part to this, by the way, now that I'm seeing it here, is um, that the cooler lines are also a problem. They have any restriction whatsoever. This also creates a problem. And uh, so they're uh, saying to have a one-way valve here, but really, um, talking with engine builders who've had this problem, they say to really just go to a little bigger line and or to really make sure there's no restriction on the lines, the cooler lines. Um, so that's part of the, the, the issue it says here. Um, and I'll read some of this other stuff in relation to this. Um, I'm going to read these, this top part here. The pump gears must be in perfect condition. Side clearance of pump gears should not exceed 0 .002. The pump cover must also be flat with no gear wear on it. This is an important step to guard against the possibility of delayed engagement due to the installation of the orifice. Thread the converter charge hole shown by the arrows with a 5 16 horse tap. That's, uh, that's what we have here in the little diagram. I hope that's clear. And then we go to make a restrictor and install into the threaded hole in pump cover. That's that point zero eight two is what I see there. Um, I'm going to use a magnifying glass to check that out or it's pretty small. Modify, uh, this is the, uh, the other gym. This is more, uh, they're saying for Chrysler. Modify a bypass valve. Let's see here. Uh, by replacing original spring with white spring with from Fairbanks shift kit in the torque fly. I do remember doing that back in the day. Um, uh, Gil Younger had the same uh, update. I didn't realize what it was for. Anyway, um, so this is the bypass valve they're talking about. It only flows in one direction. This is here. Um, there we go. This is here. But uh, from what I'm told, um, just going to bigger cooler lines helps considerably. And so that's that's an important part of this modification here. And here's a little bit of close-up look here. We're gonna we're gonna be tapping into that. Okay. Well, since that writing was so teeny tiny, I had to get this uh, magnifying glass out, and that is a point zero eight two hole in the center of that and I probably will have to go to the hardware store and uh, and pick up a, uh, a coarse uh, tap. Uh, actually not tap, uh, a thread. I probably could cut off a screw for that, a uh, thread bolt for that matter, but uh, I probably will just get the little plug type that's available at the hardware store. Alright, a little quick change of plan here. So getting online and double checking, um, there's actually only one hole and it's this one up here uh, off to the side, which is going to be this one right here. That's one we're going to drill and tap, which is better actually, it kind of goes that way. 
we'll blow it all out and clean it out when we get done here. Alright, got a little charge in my drill here. I got a 247, which shouldn't, yeah, shouldn't take a whole lot here, but I needed to open it up a little. Alright, this, however, will give us some. There we go. That might have happened. That would have been too close. Alright. And we're going to go put that on the lathe and drill a hole through the center of that. In the meantime, there we go. Should be nice and nice and threaded there. Bam. There we go. Gotta clean out that hole there with some air and some carb cleaner. You can see where the air comes out of here. And that's gonna be of course right coming off the bottom of the pump where the uh, converter is. That takes care of that little problem, I hope. That makes sense anyway. Cool. All right, so we're going to use a, uh, a threaded plug here that I'm going to put a hole in and since this is already kind of piloted for me I'm going to use this end and we're going to not get too crazy putting this in here. Alright so we got our drill bit here. We'll, uh, since I have a pilot hole already thanks to the machining of that in the first place we are going to Be able to just drill it right through. Final here, we're just going to put a little blue Loctite on this thing. Since everything's nice and dry in there, hopefully it'll, it'll stay. And that is going to be it. Let's see if we can get it started. Not too much problem here. There we go. Bada bing, bada bing. test and just kind of air checking through there. Oops. Cool. And there we go. I wanted to right quick to show the uh, bulletin uh, AERA bulletin numbers TB229, TB284, and TB336. And uh, that will all be here. Uh, this one is actually TB415, crankshaft thrust bearing failures. You can look that up. So lastly, I'm putting this back together. So I tightened that down inside there tight. Uh, I put used a Loctite and cleaned it all up. Uh, I'm probably going to replace the uh, pump bushing uh, inside here and put it all back together and get it back to the installer.